sir. But yes, this is Believe in Buckeyes. I'm Brian Brown with All American Chin to Check Why. We have a fantastic show for you guys today. But first, man, I just got to shout out my guy, man. This, hey, happy Father's Day, man. Happy hey, Father's Day. Too. Happy Father's Day to you, too, man. What, what'd you get for Father's Day? Anything, uh, anything interesting? Man, I got some cards. My kids gave me a gift card to Home Depot. So, you know, that means buy stuff for the house. But my wife, she bought me like a desk, man. If you see my setup before when we do the show, it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> rinky-dink. But well, now I got like a, a real a real desk here, man, to set my laptop on. I got my phone set up. I can see that easily now and, and everything, man. So it was good, man. It was it was a, it was a good Father's Day. How about yourself, man? Anything? I know your family got you some stuff. I seen the picture. Go <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I got so I got. <laughs> I had two frame photos of baby pictures of my, you know, my kids in one of my helmets. Um, so, so I had two of them. I left a, a space for a third kid, even before we even knew we were going to have a third kid. So I just left that space, right? Just, you know, hoping and wishing. Um, and my, my wife finally filled that space. I, we already had a kid, but she filled the space with a frame, another <laughs> third frame photo of me with a picture of me and my, you know, baby. Um, in one of my Buckeye helmets, so uh, yeah, so it was a, it was a, it was a. Yeah, it's nice, it man. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. I, I wanted to say one thing though, because I saw it. I know we talked about that third spot, but I was <laughs> thinking, if you listening to the show, if your wife listening, there's a spot underneath. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's another, that's another topic yeah, for another time, yeah. man. Another topic for another time. But yes, like, like we discussed last week, the summer is heating up around Columbus, man. We got a lot of uh, big four, five, three-star recruits coming in on their official visits, and this weekend is set to be the same. Um, from what I understand, I mean, obviously, with lists like this, you don't never know till it's, till it's here, but we're looking at Devin Sanchez coming in, a name offered, two five-star quarterbacks. Dorian Brew, another five five star quarterback coming in as well this weekend. Uh, possibly David Sanders, offensive tackle, five star. Jordan Davidson, five star running back, and the list kind of goes on to a bunch of guys that uh, that we potentially coming into Ohio State this weekend. And obviously, you know, this is the the time of boom, right? <laughs> Getting guys yeah. to commit and and things like that, that yeah. nature. Uh, what do you think about uh, some of the names that's coming in this weekend regarding recruiting? And, are you looking for potentially anyone to another par- party? I was some of these guys already committed, but yeah. another party to potentially go ahead and, and, and make that a uh, step forward to Ohio State to make that commitment. Yeah, I think that you know, I guess what I'm watching closely for not so much uh, individual. I think more position. You know, I'm I'm looking for an office alignment. So David Sanders, you mentioned um, just being able to continue to bring those guys in. We see a lot of the, a lot of the booms. <laughs> At the skill position, right? Um, so being able to lock down that offensive lineman would be key. Obviously, Dorian Brew, friend of the show, right? Um, still seeing what you know, where does he end up? Um, so that visit to Ohio State, who you know, Dorian, his mom was a a legend, track legend at Ohio State. Yeah. So a Hall of Famer, yeah. Hall of Famer. So uh, yeah, excited just to, to see that. And then you know, with this stuff, always, man, like. You don't know. You don't know whether or not they're truly going to sign until they sign. But you do want to see that commitment come in, so you know that you know these guys are locked in, focused on Ohio State. And also, I'm kind of looking at that team up north too, man, to see you know yeah. a lot of changes happen. Are they able to continue to you know keep the consistency that we've seen the last few years, given you know new coaching staff? Well, some new coaches, but a lot of new faces. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of things changing up there. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And as always, when it comes to recruiting between Ohio State and Michigan, I mean, it it, it means something, right? It, it means something about some of these guys, especially uh, a lot of these guys, to be frank, they receive an offer from both schools, right? Yeah. So I know Ohio State is probably a little bit more national recruiting c- compared to Michigan, who can be a tad bit more local. But um, Michigan, we, we did get a commit this past week from uh, Quincy Porter, who who did have Ohio State offer. Obviously, I mean, he had a Michigan one as well. Uh, he took his visit to Ohio State. He committed four-star wide receiver out of New Jersey area and said, look, there's no need. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no need for me to waste my time going up there to see those guys in Ann Arbor because he knows he wants to be a Buckeye. Um, I mean, you, I like to hear things like that. How do you feel like about a guy that's kind of you know kind of yeah. making that statement when he make his commitment? I, I like it, man, and I know how it, I know how it feels, and you know you you got to think it's like 
And a lot of these top recruits are getting recruited by all the top schools. And, you know, it's a hard decision. It's really a hard decision to make because, you know, you have options. Uh, and unless, you know, sometimes you grew up in Ohio, you're a Ohio State fan going to get the Ohio State offer. That's different, right? Um, you're a guy from out of state. You have all these top schools that are recruiting you. You got two rivals recruiting you. Um, mm-hmm. It's 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 almost – not only do I like to hear it, it's also better sometimes for the player to go to a school and at the end of the visit just be like, you know what, I don't need to – I don't need to see nothing else. This is it. <laughs> I've seen enough. Um, because now you're locked in, you know where you want to be. You start kind of, you know, looking into okay, what can my future become? You start, you know, you're working, you're working towards something. Um, and honestly, it's a tough decision, but that's that's the best situation where you just you leave a school and you know, and I don't even have to waste time going anywhere else. Um, so I don't know what they, I don't know what he did on that recruiting visit. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know. What they did, but it definitely was enough. And that's, you know, uh, shout out to Quincy Porter, man, finding a home and being able to know that, you know, this is where I want to be and I don't need to see nothing else. And at the same time, um, Ohio, you know, point goes to Ohio State versus Michigan in, this, in that regard and that his next visit <laughs> was going to be to Michigan. And that, that hurts because, honestly, it's almost beneficial to get the last visit because you're the last thing that you yeah. know the kid sees, but it's not when he doesn't even take the visit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, that makes perfect sense. So I mean, there's a lot of time making a decision, especially the one that's this tough. Yeah, the last thing that you went through, it's top of your mind. So you know, you maybe forgot a little bit of stuff that you did at these other schools, and then you get to a point you're like, well, I'll just kind of go with this one because you know I think they they check enough boxes, right? But you know, Quincy, he's a smart young man. You know, he's been working hard and he wants to see his talent to to continue to grow and rise and obviously eventually reach that goal of playing on Sundays. I don't know Quincy. Well, I just know by his actions that he's a smart man by deciding to, to commit to Ohio State and not even to visit uh, visit the team up north. But, yeah, but Michigan's been – I'm, I'm going to say they've been nitpicking again, right? I mean, obviously we know earlier uh, we we'll start a spring ball. Yeah. We lost our running back coach, Tony Alford, decided to leave Ohio State and – go up to Michigan and, and, you know, looking into it, you know, he did get a tad bit of a promotion, right? Yeah. And, and I feel like that's how they kind of enticed him to come. I'm sure he got an increase in pay, uh, went from running back coach just here at Ohio State to uh, Michigan being running back coach and also the run the game coordinator. If you know, they kind of throw that asterisk on things when it comes to coaching, especially if they want to kind of get you paid a little bit more. Uh, but they did it again, man. This time they stole a, a staffer, uh, Aaron Dunstan, who was at Ohio State as the AD, I don't want to get this right, AD of operations for recruiting. She takes the job at Michigan as the director now of operations of recruiting. So we had another person kind of jump the gate on yeah. us a little bit, man. I mean, I was just a staffer. I don't I don't know, Aaron. Uh, but, you know, it definitely hit the news. It kind of start. They start spewing rumors, right? <laughs> that Coach Day cussed her out and <laughs> called her a trap. I mean, I don't think none of that stuff is real because, I mean, why would Coach Day do that? Right? Right. I mean, that's kind of part of the business. But it does kind of look a little funny here that we see that Michigan had – essentially, they had their eye on our talent that we was able to accumulate and, and try and do what they can to kind of steal some people. Yeah, I mean, right? it's got to be – it's got to feel extra special when, one, you get somebody to fill a role that you think is qualified. And two, you take that individual from your rivals, right? Like, you can almost check two boxes. Um, and I, I've met Erin a couple of times. I don't know know her well at all. But she seemed to, based on the, you know, the reaction from players, right, uh, she seemed to be like someone who's, who's good at her job, someone that players connected with. Um, so she was effective in, in, in some way, shape, or form. So I expect her to continue to be effective uh, headed, heading up north. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it it's just an interesting thing, right? Um, Tony Alford leaves, and you look at the domino effect because Michigan grabs Tony Alford, Ohio State grabs mm-hmm. a Lachlan out of Oregon, right? And it's just like Big Ten teams still in uh, still in <laughs> uh, still in staff from the other Big Ten teams. But hey, some Big Ten teams still more than just staff. Man. <laughs> some Big Ten teams. Yeah. Right. They will go out there and, and, and steal a lot more than that during games. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nah, nah. I mean, yeah, it's right. <laughs> if anybody knows how to steal, it's Michigan. So we need to 
We need to make sure we lock down plays, staffers, players, etc. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, you get you lose yeah, two. It's definitely interesting to the yeah, right. You lose two, but the fact is, like, like you said, she obviously been doing a great job, right? I mean, all the the yeah. recruits that you know have been committed to Ohio State and. Obviously, the coaching and the play is one thing, but, you know, there's a bit of a presentation, right, when a player comes in that you go through. You know, you see these certain things at this time. Your parents see these certain things. We show them this. We, they move you here. They they, they they pair you with these players that's on the team. And obviously, all of it, the plan is to kind of get you to feel, make the university feel like this is your new home, right, yeah. and you, that you are comfortable here. Your parents are comfortable here. They know how to get information. They know what their, their child will be doing. Uh, on a day-to-day basis, and you know that, that assist in, in making a decision, right? Yeah, I mean, and and you got to think, Michigan is looking at it like Ohio State has done something right for real. Like they've been able to recruit at a high level, and you know this is an opportunity for us to continue to, or be able to continue to elevate, you know, our ability to recruit as well. Yeah, that's for sure. So yeah, so speaking about it, which though, I mean, obviously we we talked about Quincy and him making his commitment here. To Ohio State and no and no longer needing to take that visit to uh, Michigan. Last week we announced that we had a running back out of uh, the Cleveland area, uh, Bo Jackson, committed to Ohio State, and we know uh, Bo was connected to Tony Alfred, right? Tony was recruiting Bo, and and um, we in the recent we had Isaiah West commit to Ohio State as well, running back out of out of Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania. I know Michigan has landed on a guy, but we know they had lost some guys, uh, you know, due to offer moving to Michigan that he really wanted to kind of keep on his list. Uh, but they did get a guy, right? I think they got a guy, Jasper Parker, out of New Orleans area. If you guys don't know, Chim is originally from New Orleans, so it's kind of yeah. – and, and I'm sure you – I think you said you had a chance to kind of catch some film on this guy. What do you think about that running back situation for, first of all, Michigan landing a guy, right, of course, a three-, four-star guy, but them also kind of missing out on some guys due to the fact that it seems like more or less they're missing out on guys just due to the fact that Alford is no longer a Buckeye. Yeah, so one thing about running back in general to me is sometimes it's really it's hard to project maybe all positions, but to me, like, running back, it's not easy to always project a player from high school uh, to college, and a lot of times these five star, four star guys don't necessarily pan out. You get a, a, a really solid three star guy that does. I mean, every once in a while, it's just a guy who's just ridiculous, right? Um, yeah, but right. in the agent penis of the world, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, I, I, you know, uh, that kid out of you know the New Orleans area, he's from Marrero, uh, went to the same high school that my brother uh, went to. Um, before I moved out of, of uh, that area, I probably would have went to the same high school, right? You know, he's a very explosive back. I got to watch him. It, it's weird, you know, because he's connected with a lot of people from the area, right? So you kind of see um, certain players coming up. Um, and he's a guy who has a lot of speed, very explosive. Um, doesn't necessarily look like the traditional compact running back that you see a lot of times, but uh, good vision. And it can really put the burners on. And honestly, when you look at these running backs, I mean, if somebody's doing these rankings and these ratings, um, who's a four-star, who's a three-star, but he doesn't look too much different in terms of ability and talent than a lot of the you know, the, the higher-rated guys. So, um, honestly, I think it was a, a good get. You're talking about Michigan going into Louisiana and getting the back. Um, and yeah. this, this 2025 class out of Louisiana, there's a lot of running backs this class. It's, uh, this go around. There's always a lot of running backs, but for some reason, it seems like this class has a high concentration of backs. Everybody can't go to LSU, right? So there's some guys looking to <laughs> looking to go go elsewhere. So I think it's a good pickup by them, um, even though at the same time, Tony Alford, who's like, like you mentioned, his good relationship with some of these other guys that's going on in Michigan, and you you would think that they were hoping to be able to grab some of those guys and you know. Uh, get them to go to Michigan. They haven't so, so far. There's still another guy out there that possibly they can they can get. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see the battle yeah. of the running backs between the two schools. Yeah, yeah. And that and that guy is uh, Jordan Davidson. So, right now he's still uncommitted. It, it's stated that, you know, he's, he's supposed to take his visit to Ohio State this week. Obviously, like I said, we already have two guys committed for this class, right? So, it, it we'll have to see, right? We never know, obviously – 
Ohio State is known for getting talent. So we'll, we'll see how that goes there. But also is, is is worth to mention, you know, some of the guys that, that offer have missed out on, right? You missed out on Bo. Uh, you know, Bo decided to stay in Ohio. Uh, it was also Marquise Davis who committed to Kentucky. He was really high on offer. It was really – it was almost like a shoe in. He was coming to Ohio State to play for Alford, and then when he goes to Michigan, uh, from there, obviously, he his recruitment was still open. He takes a visit to Michigan, but kind of states that you know he went up there just really to out of respect for for Coach Alford, but you know he he didn't want to be uh, 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 what do they call themselves the man in blue? I don't know, <laughs> go blue guy, which is completely understandable. Understandable. So he took himself to you know he went to Kentucky. Uh, to put on some a different shade of blue, yeah. uh, <laughs> and and they, they didn't want to follow him up there. So I mean, it's just I mean, I guess it's just interesting that you know you see that you know that you know him changing his schools kind of you know it matters, right? It's matter to these players that you know a lot of guys want to be Buckeyes, and you know just because a, a certain coach goes to a certain place, uh, the players does not necessarily just want to follow that coach, and kind of you know they still have to make their own decision and decide to pick a a much better school to come to Ohio State and going up there. Yeah, I think sometimes it depends on the school. It also depends on the coach. Um, and then, it, it, you know, the question is, are they, are these players really connected to the coach or are they connected to the school? I think even Isaiah West, who uh, the running back who just recently committed to Ohio State, was previously committed to Kentucky. Uh, so it's kind of like the Midwest shuffle that's going on between Ohio State, Michigan, <laughs> and Kentucky of all places right now. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny. Kentucky has been kind of, if you're in the Midwest, Kentucky has been like sneaking in and getting a lot of guys. Obviously, they they got uh our our former running back, um, um Chip, taking on his name, Chip Trainum. Chip, yeah. Chip Trainum. Yeah, he decided to go down to Kentucky. I don't know. You kind of hear what you hear about Kentucky is that you know they surprisingly have kind of deep pockets when it comes to just some of this in a, in our recruiting stuff. So we'll see. I mean, obviously they're building the team, right? They had a decent season last year. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about Kentucky, but it'd be, you know, historically not very good, right? But it seems like they're kind of trying to working on building on something to try to, try to, try to change that a little bit. Yeah. They're, they're getting into the fold. So we got to make sure we stay ahead of them as well. It seems like they, <laughs> I mean, in terms of, in terms of location, Kentucky, Cincinnati, I mean, yeah. uh, in terms of the, the closeness, they're right there. They're in the SEC. They're right so, there. you know, the, the the money being generated by Kentucky um, is going to be on par with some of these other uh, SEC teams. But I don't know. It's just, they're just not a, a brand that you expect to have the level of impact that would draw a ton of talent. But it's just seem, it seems like they may have a running back whisperer out there that's getting guys uh, <laughs> to commit. Or they may have some, some – they may have, you know, pushed their – you know, money specifically towards running backs to, uh, you know, make sure they, they, they secure those guys. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. When I was in school, I had a Kentucky commit. It was funny enough. Kentucky used to come, like offer all the Glenville guys. It was all they never recruited us. Like you just get a letter from Kentucky sure. and it'd be, you know, the, the nice formal letter that, you know, we're offering you a scholarship here, but no coaches come up with it. You know, they weren't trying to get guys down for visits. It was kinda I don't know, interesting at that time. But uh yeah, so I mean, uh, I mean that's Ohio State. I mean, right? We, we're getting ready for the summer. We got the guys coming in, and obviously next week we like to kind of talk about some more booms here and see who we can get to commit over the weekend. I, I am, uh, I am interested. I don't know, man. I am interested you know, in terms of those, those defensive backs, right? Because they got they got a slew of them right now. You still got Dorian Blue coming in. I mean, how many defensive backs <laughs> does, does Ohio State? get in this class. We have Trey McNutt out there who um one of the top safeties in the country. Number one player I believe in in the state of Ohio. Um dad played at Ohio State, right? Um I'm you know I'm I'm it, it still feels like they have a little bit of momentum from the from a defensive back standpoint with these recruits. And mm-hmm. if they bring these guys in it'd be a legendary haul from a, a defensive back standpoint. <laughs> I'm going to throw this at you since we're on the conversation and we're talking about so many guys, right? Mm-hmm. Come in, like, especially, in, you know, deep of the backs, all these high, really talented guys. What do you do, I guess, in this era, you believe? I mean, obviously, we don't know. Like, what, what do you do, you believe, like, if you 
overdo it, right? You what if you just end up with too many corners and safeties? Who, I mean, do you in, in your mind, yeah. putting you on the spot here, what would you do like to, to make sure you got, I guess, the top guys that you really wanted, but you know, you might just end up in a spot where you essentially maybe offered <laughs> just offered too many. Yeah, I mean, at some point you gotta go t- talk to a kid and be transparent and say, look, we got we got these many guys. It may be in your best interest to go elsewhere. But I, I honestly, I think what ends up really happening is those guys who are already at Ohio State get squeezed. It's kind of like, you know, you're 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 a sophomore. You're likely not going to start the next two years or so because you got guys who are at your position who are our starters, right? Mm-hmm. And then we got these young guys coming in who are probably going to play special teams and you know whatnot in our the future. So it's probably time for you to, you know, figure out, make a decision. Do you stay here and continue to, you know, finish out your career, probably play special teams, continue to compete for a position, um, and see what happens? Or do you go from, go in the transfer portal and find something else? And I think that's I don't know how those conversations go, but if I'm a coach, um, you know, I, I value transparency. I think I'll be transparent with the kids and be like, look, this is your this is your red shirt sophomore year. You've been here three years. You know, it's going to be tough getting on the field, and then we got a new, a new crop of guys who are ready to go. Um, <laughs> it, may be, it may be time for you to consider going elsewhere. And that's a tough conversation, really, um, because it's kind of unfortunate. You know, you want you want guys who are committed to coming to Ohio State to be able to continue to to get an opportunity to compete and get on the field. But at some point, you just run out of space for everyone. Um, run out of space. And that's the reality yeah. that Ohio State has to face every year, for real, at certain positions. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, you know, at Ohio State, like you said, it's a lot of talent. And then, you know, throughout our career, right, we can name countless of guys that was probably good enough, right, to start at some other schools and most likely maybe playing a little bit more could have got them – that that not needed that look needed maybe for them to kind of continue their careers and play on Sundays, play professionally in the NFL, but just kind of like you say, due to the mix of it, yeah. right? <laughs> Your guy gets good, right? He's making some plays on the field, so you kind of have to stick with him. And then you got the young guys behind them, kind of like you say, that's talented, hungry, and 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 need an opportunity as well, or there's a chance we may lose them. So you kind of have to, you know, sh- you know, do, do a little bit to kind of show them a little bit. And then you get those guys, like you say, that's right in the middle of it that kind of, you know, just kind of missed their window D- due to every reason, right? Maybe it was an injury. Yeah. Maybe just due to, you know, a guy that came in just made so many, you know, just a phenom and made just so many fantastic, outstanding plays that um, you just couldn't move them, right? You couldn't, you, you had to get that, you had to put that guy out there. And uh, it just, it's happened, right? right? That's kind of, that's one thing about college football that, that like you say, happens essentially every year. Brandon, every year. Brandon Underwood was a guy that was kind of in that position. So you had, like, Michael Genus, Jenkins, Donald Washington, who were starters and who were going to play. Brent, uh, Underwood was about the same age, maybe even a little bit older, right? And then I was coming up, and we had recruits coming in, and he also got in a little bit of trouble, right? So, he, he, you know, trouble. he got a little yeah, bit of trouble. Yeah. So, <laughs> He was, but he was a guy like you look at him. He like, you know, there's no need to tolerate the little bit of trouble you got in because at this point, um, you know, he probably won't play here. And he was good, man to man coverage. He could play, he, he yeah. could play safety. End up leaving, finishing up at Cincinnati, and then getting drafted <laughs> in the NFL. So, yeah, um, won a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's crazy because it really. I mean, imagine he doesn't get in a little bit of trouble. He just stays in. You know, plays it out and uh, doesn't ever get a chance to get on the field. It's a, it's a whole different um, future uh, for him. But I, you know, I, I wanted to ask you something, man, because you know this is off season, yeah. right? And we're talking about recruiting because this is where all the recruiting happens. This is where a lot of the foundation is is set. However, you know, you go on social media and we're celebrating all of these booms, <laughs> right? <laughs> for fans fighting with Michigan about they. You know, they got a three-star. We got a four-star. We got the better player. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm sure they haven't mm-hmm. done their homework. Uh, how much does this off-season <laughs> – how much does this off-season matter? You know, like, do you do you feel like – you know, the, the one, do you feel like Ohio State has won the off-season? And then how much does it matter 
when it comes this season that they've been so. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely feel like Ohio State has won all season. Uh, if we look at if we're just looking at first off with guys returning, right? And I'm, 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 I'm assuming you're return. You're just referring to Ohio State and Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right? Or we're talking about the nation. No, this is this is okay. Okay, between two. Yeah, we definitely won. So obviously, obviously, I mean, we we're drive away, right, from winning the game in Michigan, and I, and I feel like Michigan they 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 had a, a solid team, right? They had a very good defense, a running game still. Um, JJ McCarthy, I would say, was opportunistic, right, against Ohio State, right? He he didn't lose the game, right? He, and he made whenever he, it was a time, he kind of he made some plays and they, and they won the game. And like I said, we had a drive there to kind of get back in it and. You know, unfortunately, we don't we don't show up to protection, which leads to an interception. Uh, once the quarterback gets hit, throwing the ball, and we lose that game. So now coming back off this season, obviously we know all the change that happened in Michigan. Lose the coach, they got us. You know, the cheating scandal. They lose the coach. They lose a lot of coaches. Uh, they bring back uh, more to kind of be the head coach. A lot of changes yeah. um, up north. And I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this on a lot of DUIs up north <laughs> this this whole season. And. Uh, <laughs> And, and, uh, and Ohio State, you know, they got a lot of guys back, right? To be frank, and then you talk about our recruiting class, number one in the nation. So, yeah, I think it matters because, for one, it kind of just builds to the perception that, you know, we people like what they see here at Ohio State. The players like being here. The recruits like coming here. And that's always the start. You win with players, right? When it really comes down to it, yeah, I mean, you obviously we know there's a lot of steps in between the process. You got to develop guys. They have to be mentally ready, smart players, teach them to become smart players, learn how to play the game of football, go out there on Saturdays and execute so you can win games, right? It's a lot of steps in between there. But when it comes down to it, it start off with that talent, right? And Ohio State has been doing a fantastic job at um, acquiring talent, retaining talent. Um, and now it's time to really, you know, the guys that play or develop guys that perform, it's time just to kind of keep it going. Right. Yeah. Obviously, we we each season we I feel like we kind of got like a little excuse about what went wrong, why we didn't you know quite get it to the national championship several years ago. Is our defense? We get the defense fixed, and then now we have little stuff with the offensive line play, right, and the things of that nature. And now it's kind of to a point where there's no more excuses. It's time to go out there, put our best product on the field, um, perform, beat Michigan. Obviously, get into the playoffs and make some noise there as well, and try to win us a national championship. And obviously, you know the ball could literally bounce our way and we lose the game. Understandable, but it still depends. It still matters how you going out there and you played that game and was you ready to go. Uh, so, yeah. So I feel like we won this all season. I, like I say, in my mind, Michigan is not going to be that strong of a unit. I have them losing multiple games last next season. Yeah. Um, we can kind of, we'll talk about 